Welcome back, modelers. So today, I have the pleasure of reviewing the Tamiya F4B Phantom, along with the brand new Kinta Studio interior 3D decals. So these are actually not even hitting the store shelves in the US yet. So I've got a little bit of an advanced copy to show you how amazing these things are. So I've played with these a little bit with uh, the Great Wall Hobby F15. You can see the review in one of the other videos here. And so I'm dying to give this another go and see um, what I've learned from there to here and just see what kind of detail it adds over the you know kit parts. So with this, let's show you the details that you'd be adding. The first part is we're getting into a lot of the seat parts. And so the ejection handles, I think those are going to be kind of cool, but I'm wondering if they're going to be, uh, if they have the right rounded effect to it. So we're going to look at those, but everything else looks pretty awesome. The seat belts work really well for the scale, everything else there. I love just a little no step on there. All that's awesome. But Kind of the key to all of it is all these different switches and everything on the consoles. That's pretty amazing. You got this uh, 3D kind of protrusion of where uh, they look into the radar. All that's pretty awesome. So we'll be looking at that. And then usually where it's hit or miss is the instrument panel. So let's actually take that out. Okay, so with this, I really like it. Um, there's certain parts where I might try to play around with doing some matte finish, matte coat to it to make sure there's more contrast, but you can see, you know, you just, it's kind of flat satin in a way, and then you twist it and boom, you can see some clear to there. So we might play around a little bit with that to give it a little bit more pop. So I'm gonna be showing you how these are all added. How we're going to actually implement these. Go through the instruction booklet of all this. And then we're going to answer some of the questions that you guys had. So we're going to see, is it something that you can apply varnishes over? Can you apply weathering? Like, is it just you put it there and don't touch it, leave it? Like, what does it come down to for that? So first, before we get anywhere, what we got to do is go to the kit parts and remove some of this fine to me a detail. So I have on here with just a Sharpie um, it highlighted what parts I need to remove the detail. So I'm gonna be using just a hand file, just something like this. You could use all sorts of different things, but this tends to work pretty well to get into all the recesses that we want to and just in, into the parts. So first I need to sand all those down, remove all those detail and then I'll show you what that looks like, which would probably be a little bit boring. <laughs> and then we're gonna get into all the, uh, so we're gonna be painting the cockpit before we put on the decals and go from there. I've gone through and I've painted the parts. And so I just used the XF19 that uh, calls out for in the instructions. I uh, don't know how accurate that is because it's sky gray, but I don't know much about these. So I'm gonna assume it's correct and move on with there. And hopefully it looks like they match up pretty good with the decals. One thing that you also note is um, probably wise not to use the Sharpie on your own because there's a pain trying to cover that up and it just would melt and mix up everywhere. <laughs> but luckily I, those parts are gonna get covered. So that's why it looks a little bit like something from Tron or something. But the next part, we're gonna do is we're gonna apply this like a decal but not like a normal decal so what we're gonna do we've got this instrument panel so I'm gonna put that into the water just get it wet let that sit then I'm using this ultra glue but standard PV PVA type glue should work pretty well and we just need a little bit on here. OK. 
Okay, so that's there. And this should be move around, and it does. They're more structurally strong than like a standard decal, but you don't want to mess it up. And so some of these you might not place by hand, but this one's a little bit thicker and we're okay with it. So I can take my tweezer and just kind of get it in place. Okay, give it a little bit of pressure. Sure it's sitting down pretty good. Okay, so that is the first one. So we need to do these two sheets full of them. So rather than just uh, go through, because the process is really just that simple. In the second video, I'll show you how to do the um, seat belts and all of that. That part is a bit tricky, but this is very much flat decal. All right, so it's been about an hour. I've got all the decals in. And you can see, just makes it pop everywhere. Um, I can only imagine trying to, how long it would take to replicate all these details. Be insane. So these I'm gonna let gl uh, dry a little longer. And then I'm going to go to the next phase because there's a few bits of this that I think I need to paint because they need to be silver or they need to be a different color. I, think I believe this part needs to be actually metallic aluminum or something. But let's look at the instrument panel. So with that, pretty awesome. I uh, don't think I'm gonna touch anything with that. I'm gonna leave it the way it is, along with this one here. Pretty amazing. And you can see like how that, uh, tube the shadow thing for this radar uh display whatever it is is pretty awesome how it just i mean you can see how much it sticks out well if it focuses so that was pretty cool but very easy just used this uh ultra glue to put in place no decal solvents or anything like that needed in here it's not trying to conform to a surface really you're making you're sanding the surface to allow this to conform so i'm going to definitely put on some flat coat to some other areas and maybe that'll make a few bits pop more then we're going to get into the weathering of this so we'll go in to see that but of curiosity see if which, uh, hopefully i don't have to looks like i might have goofed and need to take some parts out so i can actually fit that back in because that goes in there so for those paying attention uh don't do that but it looks like this side fits on so adds a lot of contrast to that and we'll do the instrument panel later but this should go into the side there but looks like i might have to remove some parts to put that in place so hmm, learn from my mistake on that one but yep so i'm going to put on a a few bits of paint here and there and put on a flat or satin well probably yeah i'm going to stick with flat and i'm going to show you some different things that we'll do for getting this weathered making sure it has a little bit more kind of pop um beyond these decals all right, so I am done now with a little bit of the weathering. So let me go through what I have done. So on the inside of here, I've put in a little bit of chipping where there's just some general areas of scuffing around, especially on the uh, pedal, rudder pedals, things like that. So I have some just polished 
paint uh, we use polished metal from uh, MIG that I use for that. And then uh, beyond there, I gave it a wash with a mix of uh, the Citadel Agrax Earthshade and Nuln Oil and uh, kind of diluted a little bit with Windex. Put that into the crevices and just made everything pop. I think it also gave just kind of a blending effect to a lot of the instrument panels. Um, I also did some flat paint on as much as I could with the instrument panels and gauges, um, all the different switches and all that to just kind of blend it in. I might go in a little bit again and, and put points like right here, give it a little bit of gloss, make sure it's it shines and shows you that it is a gauge. And just looking around, that might be needing a little bit of gloss to make it pop a little bit, but you can still see some shine to it. So I did that all over and just gave it a kind of a big unifying grunge to it. And this can come out. So that is where we got there with the main instrument panel. I didn't do much of anything weathering. Um, I did give it a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of the wash with the Agrax just to kind of give it a little bit more of uh, some non-uniformity, you could say. So I've got that. And then here is the side panel, which I think turned out really well with that Agrax. The last step that I did is giving it this uh, MIG light dust nature effects. And so we have in the crevices in here, some dust that just kind of collects into the corners all that uh not sure how much of this will actually be seen when we put it all together but um, from what i've seen on some of the built ones you can still at least very much see all the switches on the instrument panel and just these decals saved a ton of time goofing with uh just all the switches and adding some detail that is just if you can focus just all that detail on there is just pretty dang hard to replicate to make it exactly like that so so far very pleased uh next step i'm going to be playing around with getting into specifically the uh, ejection seat so that's the whole other set of decals get to play with right here and so that'll be fun uh, but I need to build at least the ejection seat and go from there. So we'll see you on the next video.